What's going on guys? So I'm back with my annual video where I discuss the professional football system here in America. It's so sad that I have to make a new one of these videos every single year, but every single year, stuff changes. New leagues pop up, new leagues fold, leagues jump up a division, leagues drop a division. It's just been crazy over the last five, 10 years. Hopefully one day I will make one of these videos and it will be my last and we'll have some stability in the football pyramid here in America. And you know, maybe even one day we might have promotion and relegation between the leagues, but you know, we'll see. But until then, here's the professional football pyramid for 2022. I'll roll the intro and then I'll do a deep dive into every single one of these leagues and talk about attendances, talk about average salaries and kind of go into them a little bit more. Now, before we start, I just wanna thank Halt's Boots for sending me out another pair of the Vapor 11s. I'm just about to start preseason with the Charleston Battery and these are gonna be fantastic to have. Thank you so much. Full disclosure, this video is not sponsored. I'm not getting paid anything to say this, but I did get these boots sent out to me for free. Halt's Boots has been supplying me with these Vapor 11s for the last like two years. It, he's just been amazing. I'm just so thankful that he's always been able to find the greatest pair of boots and send them out to me so I can continue to play at my highest possible level with those boots. It just really means a lot. So if you guys are looking for some discounted boots or you guys are looking for some older models of some boots, then I highly suggest going to his Instagram, giving him a follow, and then going out and checking his website. Anyway, let's just hop into the pyramid. At the very top, we have the MLS. The MLS, or Major League Soccer, has been around for a while now, and for this 2022 season, they'll have 28 teams competing in a Eastern and Western Conference. The average attendance in the MLS for the 2021 season was right around 16,910 fans per game, and players here, non-designated players here, can expect to make anywhere between 63,000 at the minimum, up to 612,000 per year. However, each team is allowed what's called designated players, and these designated players can be paid anything. Currently, the highest paid designated player is Carlos Vela, and he's making $6.3 million per year. The average MLS player can expect to make $418,000 per year, but because of these DPs, because of the designated players that skew this a little bit higher, it's better to look at the median, and the median MLS player makes about $200,000 Per year. Underneath the MLS, we have the USL Championship, and for the 2022 season, there'll be 27 teams competing in the Eastern and Western Conference as well. This is the league that I've been playing in for the last few years, and I will once again be playing with the uh, Charleston Battery. The average attendance in the USL Championship last year was 4,300 fans per game, and players can expect to make anywhere from a minimum of $27,000 upwards to about $100,000, maybe just over $100,000 per year. Now below the USL Championship, this is where it kind of gets a little confusing. In the third division, we have three completely separate leagues. We have the USL League One, we have the NISA, and we have the newly formed MLS Next Pro. The USL League One will have 11 teams competing in the 2022 season and one large nationwide conference. The average attendance for the 2021 season was 1,752 fans per game. And when it comes to salaries, it's kind of an open spectrum because there has not been a league minimum set yet. However, from my experience and talking to players that have been in the league or talking to players that will be going to that league next year, it's pretty on par with the USL Championship salaries, maybe just slightly lower across the board. The next league, NISA, will have 13 teams for the 2022 season, and once again, will be competing in one large nationwide conference. The average attendance for the fall 2021 season in the NISA was 1,289 fans per game. Once again, there is no minimum salary for players in this league, but you can kind of expect players to make anywhere from $500 a month up to $3,000 a month, and there's definitely gonna be players outside of the spectrum on both ends, but that's kind of like the range, which is pretty typical in the third division. That's pretty typical as well for the USL League One. And one big disclaimer about this with the USL Championship, the USL League One, the NISA, and MLS Next Pro, I'm kind of just spitballing my best estimates from what I've heard, from my experience. This isn't concrete fact. The salaries are not released to the public. So this is kind of just all secondhand stuff, thirdhand stuff. It's not directly statistical numbers, if that makes sense. Finally, the newly formed MLS Next Pro will have 21 teams competing in the 2022 season, split into an Eastern and Western Conference. This league is basically just the MLS Reserve League. All of the MLS two teams that were once competing in the USL Championship and the USL League One have moved over into this league for this 2022 season, with a few exceptions that are still playing in the USL. 
However, over the next year or two, they're all planning on moving over to the MLS Next Pro. Obviously, we don't have any attendance data because this is a newly formed league and there was no 2021 season, but we can expect these numbers to be very similar for MLS two teams that competed in the USL Championship or USL League One. And when it comes to player salaries, I honestly have zero clue. I have no idea what it's looking like. I've heard rumors, I've heard really positive rumors, and I've heard kind of negative rumors about the salary, but I don't feel comfortable putting out a number, even an estimation of the typical salary or the range yet. So those are the five different professional leagues and the three different tiers that are officially sanctioned as professional by the US Soccer Federation. Outside of that, there still are other professional teams and other professional leagues, but they're not sanctioned by the USSF. For example, there's teams in the UPSL and teams in the NPSL that will give their players housing, give their players food, give their players money, a, a contract, but it really just varies so much from team to team and from even different conferences to conference that it's really hard to kind of pin down and estimate. But majority majority of teams there don't pay their players. There's also professional indoor leagues like the Major Arena Soccer League and the National Indoor Soccer League that have players on professional contracts and are considered professional teams. The players that I know that are competing in those leagues um, talk about pretty similar contracts to what players make in the third division here in America. But again, it just varies so much from league to league, team to team, and even player to player. It's really hard to, to pin down. So anyway, that is what professional footy looks like here in America. Compared to Europe and other countries you know, around the world, we are in our infancy. Even the MLS, which has been our most stable league, has only been around for like 26 years. I'm older than the MLS, which is kind of funny to think about. So hopefully over the next five or 10 years, you know, we start to lock down this pyramid and we start to have a little bit more stability and maybe we can have a little bit of promotion relegation between the leagues, hopefully one day. I just hope that it can just be implemented successfully. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. I'll probably be back next year with a newly updated video for 2023, but hopefully not. If you liked it, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. All right, guys. Peace.